natural revelation and special revelation. God has revealed himself uh, through all that he has created. All facts indicate God. Mm -hmm. And God has given self-disclosure of himself and special revelation to various individuals throughout human history. And through his sovereignty and providence, he's caused it to be objectively and accurately preserved through the Bible. All right. Um, cause I believe, um, I was watching your, you know, your scuffle with destiny and, um, uh, and he did, he wasn't quite receptive to that answer. And I'm gonna well, he actually, con well, he contradicted himself because he said that he wanted a good reason or a justification to believe in the ultimate, namely God. Yet when it comes to, uh, his most foundational belief about reality, he doesn't have a justification a belief is arbitrary. Mm -hmm. All right. Hey, Darth. Hey, Darth. Um, so I'm here now. Sorry about that before. Um, okay. Now go ahead. Yeah. You so, wanted to so discuss I, the age of the earth? Yeah, I wanted to discuss the age of the universe, and I was just wondering if, um, for the sake of the argument, we can both um, we can both imagine that we're both Christian, that we both um, believe in God as the foundation for all things. We both have you know, are just, are justified in our belief. Imagine. I don't, I don't play the imagination game. Okay. okay. Are you, are you a Christian? I'm not a Christian. What are Um, so technically I am Jewish. Um, but I was wondering if we could discuss the age of the universe. Are you a, are you a theist? I am not a theist. Are you an atheist? Uh, I am, I am an agnostic technically okay. i guess I'm okay um, all right go ahead so i was wondering if we could discuss the age of the universe okay go ahead so when we my issue is with the young earth um and i guess here's how i would spell it out is that when we like there are certain things that i assume so i assume that the speed of light is constant i assume that it's not different a million light years away if there is such a thing or a billion light years away. And I assume is that, that at this moment, what about in the past? Yes. So I assume that the speed of the speed of light in the past as well. Okay. So, okay. And then, so then the issue is when we look at stars, when we look at stars, we we can look at the angles when we take a telescope and it revolves. I'm familiar with this. Okay. So we can measure the distance with trigonometry. You're familiar with that. Um, we can also see a star go from a state of existence to non-existence. So we can see a supernova would be one example. Another example would be if a star gets eaten up by a black hole. Um, and so. The issue I have with the young with the young universe is when we observe with we do the trigonometry and we observe a star that's millions of light years away and we see it go supernova we see it go from a state of existence to a state of non-existence um, on the view that the Earth is five thousand seven hundred and eighty years old. Um, we would it seems to be that we would have to make the case we would have to either invoke a certain number of explanations like one explanation we can invoke is that god created an old earth and just like god could create an old tree and doesn't have to create the tree with the seed and the seed grows into a tree god can just create what do you mean what do you mean create an old earth what does that mean yeah so so just like when if we're talking about a tree um god can just create the tree as it is so the tree can well, just be then it would then it, it would then it, it wouldn't be old right it wouldn't be old temporally but it would be old biologically in the sense mm, it would be, no it wouldn't be a sapling no well adam you know after uh, after 24 hours adam was one day old sure it, it would it would be temporally old that um no, well, that, it would that, be well, mature. That, well, adam was mature it wasn't it wasn't a prepubescent Right. No. Yeah, that's yeah. correct. But old, all just sim simply is, is a chronological measurement. So Adam was young. Sure. That's fine. So Adam was young, but he was mature. He was biologically mature. 
Um, so I'm talking about that kind of analogy for the universe. So that mature that only only relative only relative to um, uh, the maturation rate of his his descendants. And all, correct, all it is, correct. it's a relative relative comparison. Yes, I agree. Yeah, exactly. So Adam wasn't old. Right. Sure. You can. Adam wasn't temporally old. He was old relative to. He was mature relative to what would maturation rate is of his descendants. I, yeah, exactly. And so that's what I'm trying. That's what I mean when I say God created a quote unquote, quote unquote old Earth, which is really a young Earth, universe, which is really a young universe. So, if God were to do that, um, it seems like we would have to say that the star that well, we'd have to say either a couple of things. We would have to say either the speed of light is different the speed of light was different because that would account for why the star could exist and go to a state of non-existence um and we are just observing the photons if the light was traveling faster which would account for the difference in distance which would account for the difference in time required to travel that distance so that's one explanation another explanation could be that the star really never existed and never had existed and that these ex these explanations don't really seem like when I look up in the sky and I see stars, I want to be able to say that the stars that I'm seeing not only not just it's I don't want to have to say that they don't ex not only no don't exist but never because like for example, if we're talking about a star that's millions that we're measuring as millions of light years away, presumably if the speed of light is constant and it was constant in the past. That it would, in order for the light to get to us, it would have to take millions of light years. Uh, I'm sorry, millions of years to get millions of light years to us. Um, when you when you assume that the speed of light is constant through space, contemporarily in the past, do you have a justification for that? No, that's why it's an assumption. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the other out. So so it seems like so one out is to say, okay, well, the speed of light w was different in the past. And that's why we are, you know, even though the universe is 5,780 years old, the speed of light was just faster. Now, there may be some other issues with that, but there may be some ways around that. So one other way issue, if the speed of light was faster, why, we, you know, we would expect to see a certain shift in the wavelength when light travels, um, when light is hitting us at a faster rate, there's the same thing called the Doppler effect, and that changes the wavelength. And it doesn't seem like we're observing that, although we can say that that may. Are not you be are you are you assuming that the medium through which you perceive light and measure light is the same medium in space, deep space? Yeah, yeah. I'm assuming that well, whatever. How is that? It is, how is that just? How is that justified? It's not. It's an assumption. Okay, good. So you have a world of make believe. Sure. Um, this, yeah. So the one way, you, one other thing you can say is you can say that, okay, well, there's some medium that would change the Doppler shift. Well, and, you wouldn't be able to say that because you, the world you live in is a world that's just simply chance. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not. So I, um, I don't know. I don't know why you would appeal, be appealing to laws or constants in a world of chance. I'm, I'm just wondering what, a, what a christian might say i'm uh, like i'm not talking a christian would about. say that the earth and the universe are as old as the biblical chronologies and genealogies indicate that's what a christian right. would and should say so what i'm curious about is when when we observe a star and we measure it geometrically to be millions of light years away are you are but how do you how do you, how does how does measuring things make sense in a chance universe where uh there, there's no, there's no causality and laws of nature. Oh, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not asking the question with respect to my worldview. I'm just asking. Well, when you talk about measurement, when you talk about measurement, uh, you are, you're presupposing that you're in a world where there's causal relations between events and laws of nature, aren't you? Oh, I'm assuming. Sure. Do you have a justification for that? No. At least not to, not that I'm aware of. I'm not aware that I have a justification. Maybe maybe I have a justification for it, but I'm not aware. So you so you so you believe these foundational things without justification? I don't know if I would call it foundational because I'm not sure if I want to commit myself to foundational. Oh, so you don't believe you don't believe a causal relations between events is foundational to your reasoning about events? I I don't know. 
how would you be able to talk about the the speed of light without causal relations? How would you oh, be able I, to talk I, about the speed of light without referring that nature or the world around us operates in some law like ways? Yeah. So so I don't know. Like if any we, yeah. Anytime you start talking about the world around you, you are presupposing causal relations and laws of nature. Otherwise, what you say is gobbledygook. I don't know if that's the case or not. Um, well, could can you could you give me could you give me um, a state of affairs, uh, an assertion about a state of affairs that doesn't presuppose causal relations and laws of nature? Well, I but I'm, I don't know. I I think I've, I've so either either you do presuppose causality and laws of nature or you don't. Which is it? Sure, but I could be I could not know which one I do. No, I'm asking you. Do you presuppose that? And I am answering. I don't know. Then you don't know. Then you should be quiet. Then because then you have no basis for the intelligibility of statements. Well, I don't know if that's the case. Um, so. Well, I guess you don't know anything, do I, you? Is there I, anything that you? Is there anything that you know? I don't know. Okay. Well, thank you for the conversation. All right. So, like, you don't right. know that you know anything. So we're done. Thank you for your time. All you know, right. Okay. Do you like, know? So do, I, you, do you I, know that you're even talking with me? I don't know. Look, oh, so sorry. you don't know? Okay. okay well, so why, I, I, do you know that you presuppose the speed of light? I have already... You're a robot. I, I've granted you that that was an assumption that I've made, um, but I was just wondering... So is, there any, I, is there anything you know? I don't know. Don't know. So do you know, do you know that you don't know? No, I, I don't know that I don't know. Okay, so yeah, you're just you're just you're just a mess. I don't know. You're an incoherent. Mean. You're you're an incoherent mess, sir. Well, I don't know that. Well, so yeah, my question. Yeah, is, to say so, I don't know X is a knowledge statement. If you say I don't know anything, is that your position that you don't know anything? Well, I don't. I don't know that. I don't know that. I don't know that. I don't know. Okay. Do you know anything? I don't know. Yeah. Listen. Listen, dude. I'm probably old enough to be your father. I don't know whether you're trying to play to people in the room, but do you think that you're uh, fooling me? I, I don't. Yeah, I mean, think now, I, now, I now you're just now you're just speaking gobbledygook. Okay, you're not making I any don't sense. Know if that's the case. You're not making any sense. Okay. Does okay, your worldview I, I, provide for the ability to make knowledge statements? I don't know. Well, that's a knowledge statement. I don't know if that's a knowledge. All right, thank you for your time. You're you're, right. you're you're totally incoherent at this point. Okay. Um, so there's no point. There's no point to me interacting with somebody who doesn't know anything. So, Dark, thank you for you your recall, time. If you recall, when we started this conversation, you, I asked. Yeah. You, do you I know that we had it? Do you know that we had a conversation? If you recall, when do I'm you know gonna, that you had a conversation? I asked you a question. No. Do you know we had a conversation. I, 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 I don't. I don't. Know. Okay. Thank you for your time. Bye bye. See you later. You're a moron. See, this is this is this is a little game these little children want to play. It's uh, right. Darth. What, what specific interpretation of Christianity does provide the foundation for all knowledge? Uh, the plain the plain reading of what the Bible says. Uh, so it's just the very plain reading. Can you be able? Yeah, it's in the plain, plain ordinary reading? language. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Okay. The only reason why people do not accept a plain reading is because they are intimidated by a, a, a materialistic, atheistic paradigm of origins. That's why they don't accept the plain reading of what God says. But surely our plain reading of what God said is like fundamentally inherent on our ability to have some empirical knowledge of what these things even are. Like, if we, what is heaven and what is earth? 